On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, enabling multiple monitors in ProPresenter 6. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you using, uh, in using software that we use here in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask a question, so just do that below the video. And as always, the best conversations ha happen over at my website, trinitydigitalmedia.com. So if you're not watching this there, head over there, and then we can uh, converse a little bit more. So I've gotten this question a whole lot. A whole lot of people have asked, hey, Paul, how do I get this to show up on more than one monitor? I have ProPresenter 6, but it's not showing, stuff isn't showing up where I want it to show. So I thought that we'd take a look at that. So let's head over to my computer right now. So let's say that for some reason, the main screen, not the control screen, but the output shows up on your main screen, or the stage display shows up on your main screen here, the control screen rather. How do you fix that? Well, a lot of people will think that the solution is to go into preferences and fix it there. That might actually work, but normally I have people start not in preferences for ProPresenter, but in preferences for the system, and here's why. Let's go in here, and you'll notice that I have three tabs, Display, Arrangement, and Color. If you do not have three tabs, if you only see Display and Color, which I've got a screenshot here. If you only see displaying color, you've got a problem because the Mac is not seeing three displays. It's only seeing one. It's not seeing two displays either, by the way. It's only seeing one. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure that the Mac is seeing all your displays. Start there before you do anything else. Now, let's say that you do see the Arrangement tab. Once you see the Arrangement tab, then there's a couple other things to check. So let's click on that tab, and now you'll see that I, in fact, have three boxes here. Now, when I click on this box, you see the red outline? Uh, well, you don't see it on the bottom because I have the, the whole thing cropped a bit, but you see the red outline on the screen right now, that indicates which display I am clicking on. So while you can't see this display to the left, if I click on it, you can trust me and say that it's outlined in red on that display. And the same thing over here on the right. I'm not gonna click that. But uh, first off, you notice that I can move that. Moving it, is indicative of where it's physically located in space. So if I wanted this, which in this case I'm going to use this as the stage display, if I wanted it down here, let's say the stage display is behind me, I could just drag that back here. If I wanted the main display, the main output up here because it was in front of me, that's fine. But as you'll recall from the beginning of the video, when I introduced this, all three of my displays are side by side, so that's why I have them arranged like this. So that's one thing to keep in mind, that you should have a box for each of your displays. Now it is possible that you have the arrangement tab, but you have just one box showing. Usually that's a result of mirror displays right here. So that needs to be unchecked just as mine is unchecked. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure the Mac sees all the displays, make sure they're not mirrored, etc. So I'm going to close this down and then we'll take a look at the 
preferences in ProPresenter 6 itself. So we go to Command, Comma, and click on that. And now you see that we do, in fact, have three boxes just as we did before. But you'll notice that one of the boxes says SD. Now, if you recall, that's my monitor to the left that says SD. My monitor to the right is my main output. And the one in the middle doesn't have anything on it. The one that doesn't have anything on it tends to be the control screen. But it could be that you find that you, in fact, have it arranged in all sorts of odd ways. So let me show you what happens if you have the main output over the um, regular control screen. So we're on the control screen. Now if I turn on the main output, oh look, there's the main output. So I need to get out of this. You won't see this, but in the lower left-hand corner, there's an X that turns that off. I can also uh, do Command-1, I believe, does that. So let's go back to the preferences here. Um, actually, let me shut that down and then bring it back up. Command, comma. OK, so what I would actually want to do is move that to one of the other screens. Same thing with the stage display. If I had the stage display over my con control screen here and I click Enable Stage Display, look, there's the stage display. Again, going back to the X in the lower left-hand corner to make that go away. So basically what I need to do is I need to know which, when I was playing with the arrangement earlier and the red outline came up, I need to note which display that outline came up on. How is that related to the boxes here? In this case, when I clicked on this one, that was the one to the left. So I moved it to the left, so it's kind of obvious to me. When I clicked on the one over here, I moved it to the right, so it's kind of obvious to me. Now when I bring up this dialog, I can drag SD to the one I want it to be, in this case the one on the left. I can drag output to the one I want it to be, in this case the one on the right. And now when I enable this, you don't see anything here, and that's because it's off over here, off to the right. Likewise, when I click Enable Stage Display, you don't see it because it's over here on this display, the one over off this edge. So that's how that works. Now there are a couple of little things while I'm here I want to talk about. Uh, first off, I'm going to disable that because I don't need it right now. Display on topmost layer. I have that checked and what that means is, let's say I'm working, let's use these as examples here. I'm working in the main window here and I accidentally move my mouse over to the side. Well, you won't see that on the stage display. You won't see the mouse because the stage display is on the topmost layer. Same thing with the output. You won't see the mouse. Also, if there was something underneath those and you uh, did a command tab to switch between applications, that's not going to overtake the output. So that's a good thing. Losing the mouse, bad, but in ProPresenter 6 we have a way to deal with that. Watch one of the other videos for that. So that's what display on topmost layer does. I'm going to uncheck that. Scale to foot output display. Uh, that scales the output to fit the display. Now I can also do that with full screen here. But let's say that I actually, while my projector could do 1280 by 720p, I only have space for say 480 lines of that top to bottom. So I have a much smaller screen. It's shorter, but it gives me a kind of wider aspect ratio. Well, there we go there, but wouldn't it be great if I could just move that up and then just pull the screen up? Bam, done. 
So that's a pretty cool little feature as well. Um, and if I want to bring it back, just click full screen and that does that. So that's uh, another cool feature here. I'm going to move that to the middle just so that it is good. Show output at launch. This is probably what you're going to want to check. If ProPresenter were to quit, nothing's perfect. ProPresenter generally is pretty reliable, but sometimes it does uh, gack up, especially if you haven't rebooted in a while. If you're using a new version, I always say test those out well in advance, not on the day of your service. If you do have that problem, you're going to want the output to show as soon as you get the software back up and running. So there you go. Configure stage display that enables you to change the configuration. Corner pinning uh, can deal with some problems with keystoning if the projector itself doesn't deal with that. So that, that's another cool feature here. Not totally sure what enable siphon means. I need to research that. So perhaps something to do a video on it in the future. And system display settings actually brings up the system display settings that we had earlier. So see, that's what that does. So I could have actually just gone directly to that if I wanted to. So that's some of the stuff about setting up multiple monitors in ProPresenter 6. Well, I hope that helped you. Um, if that was one of your questions, likely I sent you that link. So I hope that it's something that helps you out in the future as you're dealing with just all the monitors that you can use in ProPresenter. You'll notice behind me there are three, as I mentioned. That's not an accident. I've uh, hooked up three monitors so that I can do these tutorials much better. If you like this and the other videos that I've created, you'll like my email newsletter. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up your free church tech gift and get a link to my email newsletter where I'll send you all kinds of tips and tricks, some on troubleshooting, some on using graphics in the church, things like that. And you really ought to take a look at my store. That's at trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store. Counterintuitively enough, I say jokingly. Um, I know what it's like. Chances are you didn't come out of the womb knowing all about this tech stuff. But people have noticed that you're technical, so you're doing tech for your church. I get that. And I also know what it's like to spend hours and hours online looking for information, trying to figure out exactly the answer to the question you need, etc. So I've already done that, so learn from my experience. I've collated all the information into various topics like podcasting, Twitter for your church, serving in your church, video for your church, etc., and put them up on my store. So go there. You'll save a lot of money and time over just looking all over the place, and you'll be able to get exactly what you need. So head over there and pick up the appropriate resources today. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.